Hi, my name is James Herzing. In this simulation in action, Parker Wright is going to teach us how to use scripting inside of Simulation CFD to optimize fan speed. Let's listen to what he has to say. Hello everybody, this is Parker Wright coming to you from the Simulation CFD team. And in this episode, we'll talk about optimizing fan speed through automation within Autodesk Simulation CFD using the Python scripting technology. Okay, so first of all, why? Why would we want to adjust fan speeds during simulation? Well, let's start with electronics. So pretty cool shot here we see uh, in SimCFD and Showcase of a gaming system. We can see the traces moving through and around the heat sink and through a shroud uh, and out through the, uh, the fan, which is the momentum source within the box. But why would we want to adjust that? Right, so we want to arrive at a targeted temperature uh, for our chips, our components, our LEDs, and our circuit boards. We have data sheets that tell us exactly what their maximum temperatures are, and then so we want to apply a safety factor and come in below those, but not, uh, not oversize the fan as well. We want to balance performance versus pressure drop so that we can properly size the fan. So of course, um, you can you know, maximize the fan size and push as much air as you want to through an enclosure, no matter what the pressure drop is. But it's all about balancing and trading off uh, the performance versus pressure drop and versus the temperatures. So what's the business implication here? Well, it's all about preventing failures and warranty issues. So uh, recalls and failures can be very costly, very expensive, uh, both financially and to our reputation. Okay, how about data centers? Data centers uh, present a great opportunity for this um, fan speed adjustment during your real-time transient simulations. So um, determining crack sizing is very important. Obviously, we want to ensure that we have the proper amount of cooling delivered to the different racks within a data center. But again, we don't want to over-design. Also, understanding failure scenarios is becoming very important to owners. So with the reduction of in redundancy, what happens when a specific air conditioning unit goes down? And we can actually ramp that flow rate down versus time to see that in real time and then see if we can have the other units respond or how much time we, left until, uh, we have left until that mission critical data is compromised. And then the last one here is reducing energy consumption and redundancy. So again, this is the business implication. So, um, maximizing the use of our resources, minimizing the use of, of, of energy uh, in order to reduce our year-over-year -year running costs and again address that reduction in redundancy that we're seeing in the market today. Lastly here is building heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. So ensuring thermal comfort of the occupants is really important to, uh, to all AE firms. Um, uh, controlling pollution and contaminants also, you know, again, how much air do we need in order to effectively sweep the space or effectively abate these contaminants or these pollutants? And again, it all ties back into energy savings as well. So there's a big uh, retrofit initiative going on. So we can come in and use SimCFD and use this fan optimization technology to show firms and owners, clients, exactly how much energy they could save by reducing the amount of uh, ventilation that they're, that they're using. So now let's look at a quick uh, demonstration of how this technology works. So big thanks to Heath Houghton on the engineering team for putting this, this together. So what we see is a pretty simple electronics box, right? I mean, nothing too fancy about this, but imagine leveraging what I'm about to show for some of the other applications that we just talked about. So in this box, we have a heat sink, board, a few chips. Those are in orange and red. And then in the right, on the right side is the actual fan housing. The fan is shown as invisible here. But essentially, we're going to use this simplified model to show off the technology. So in the lower right corner right now, we're actually entering the inputs. So how long is the simulation going to run in real time? We'll run it about 30 minutes. How frequently will we check in and say, OK, well, what's the component temperature? And based on that temperature, should my fan speed go up or should it go down? So we enter those intervals as well. And then we enter the intervals in, in which we want to output the actual results to, um, so that we can include those in presentations. So a lot of um, customization that, that's available to you, this is just one implementation of this specific type of technology. But with the Python scripting interface and the connection to simulation CFD, this is fully customizable. And it's also very straightforward. There's, we've um, built in a lot of automation and routines that you can download that help you get up to speed very quickly on this. So what are we doing? We see these lines going along the bottom of the screen. That's our plot, which shows um, how the simulation is running. And we can see that there are different steps in the plot. And those represent the steps in the analysis where we're again checking in and looking at what the fan speed is and again, what's the component temperature and how we adjust that. Now we've pulled up uh, Microsoft Excel but you can control this through any spreadsheet program. There's a whole host of programs that work with Python, very common uh, scripting language. 
today. And uh, what we see is the actual output. So again, this is all in the time domain. This is fully transient. So we're using simulation CFD advanced and we're seeing the actual data. And now here's a really visual look at it. So this graph that we see in the middle of the screen, uh, the time domain actually goes, the time axis goes from right to left. So the red line represents the fan speed or the uh, flow rate of the fan, and the blue line represents the uh, chip temperature. So we can see on the right, we're starting out at a very low fan speed and a higher chip temperature, and we can see the fan ramp up. Now it takes a little while for the chip to go down in real time, and you know, all of you electronics um, specialists out there know that with the thermal mass of chips and boards and heat sinks and enclosures, um, there's a lot of thermal inertia, so this takes a little while, but what we see is the fan actually overshoots that, that uh, blue temperature line and then starts to come back down. So we have a proportional controller that we've built into the simulation tool that's actually controlling this real time. We just saw it update again live and we're, we'll see the fan come back down and start to go asymptotic and then we'll see this kind of um, you know, very small sinusoidal response as, as they trend outward and we know that we've arrived at the right solution. So again, we are seeing exactly how much flow we need to push through this enclosure to arrive at a specified temperature. And again, think about the impacts for data centers, think about the impacts for buildings, for factories, for plants, it's tremendous. So really amazing technology um, and, and hats off to, uh, to our development team and our engineering team and, and the guys who built this. So uh, phenomenal stuff here. So I hope this was interesting for you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, parker.wright at autodesk.com. Thank you for your time.